have you ever listened to an audiobook? Because you're going to be clocking in dozens of hours listening to someone else narrate a story to you. It's going to be different than the voice in your head when you're reading. So they better be good because a bad narrator can honestly ruin the entire experience for me. There's been times where I completely gave up on reading a book because I didn't like the audiobook. Uh, then later I went back and just read the physical version and I ended up really enjoying it. The narrator needs to carry that right tone and atmosphere that just suits the novel. And especially I hate when you hear like the breathing noises or like the sharp inhales of breath as they're narrating. That's the worst. Anyway, uh, I'm going to be talking about some of the best audiobooks I have ever listened to. So hopefully a lot of these you're going to enjoy as well. Obviously, it's all subjective. One person might love a narrator that another person doesn't enjoy. So keep that in mind. But these are some of my favorites that I've listened to, and I've listened to a lot of audiobooks. Typically, I like to actually read the physical book as I'm listening to the audiobook version as well. I think it's called immersion reading or something. I don't know, but it helps me stay focused. I don't do that all the time, but when I do, my eyeballs are glued to the page. If you're wanting a really entertaining and action-packed audiobook series to listen to, you need to listen to He Who Fights With Monsters by Sherda Lou. I've been making my way through this series and it has been so much fun. This is a lit RPG that is, like I said, action packed. It has some really great humor in there. The world building is fantastic as well. And you can't go wrong with the audiobooks. It's produced by Podium Entertainment and narrated by Heath Miller. And Miller does just an amazing job at bringing to life the snarky attitude of Jason, the protagonist. Uh, he really brings that snark, and but also the determinism and the growth that Jason goes through, while also capturing all the side characters as well. They all got their own voice, and I feel like he does such a great job at just bringing life into the series. And Jason is a character that's really interesting. He's kind of somewhere between chaotic neutral and chaotic good. And 100% the dialogue and the banter between the characters, that is one of the best parts of this series. And again, the narrator does a fantastic job at all the one-liners and the banter and everything. And it also happens to be perfect timing. I was already listening to these audiobooks because this video is sponsored by Podium Entertainment to talk about the upcoming release of He Who Fights With Monsters, book 11, which is releasing July 23rd. And guess what? You guys can listen to it over on Audible. Not just that though, I have a giveaway to announce as well. Now, Podium Entertainment has been gearing up for the release of book 11 and they're excited to unveil a set of tabletop miniatures featuring Jason, Asano, and a few of his trusty companions from Team Biscuit. Now these are one-of-a-kind miniatures ready to march fearlessly into your next tabletop adventure. And they're a testament to Jason and his kick-ass sidekicks that were forged in the He Who Fights With Monsters universe. If you want a chance to win these miniatures, you need to act fast because they're only giving away five sets to five lucky winners. Winners. Rally your party and enter the giveaway using the link in the description. And thank you to Podium Entertainment for sponsoring the video. Again, you guys should check out these audiobooks. I have been having so much fun listening to the series. Come here. I wish I could listen to Project Hail Mary by Andy Weir again because Porter's narration of uh, the protagonist, uh, Rylan Grace, I almost forgot his name there, uh, was just so good. Like he brings this authenticity to the character and just keeps the whole thing very engaging. And Rylan, in general, is a character that, you know, has a lot of, he's very charismatic, he's got a lot of wit to him, basically he's a lone astronaut on a mission to save Earth, I, I won't get into it, okay? But you need to give it a listen. If you didn't know, they're making a movie starring Ryan Gosling, I'm sure it's going to be fantastic, but you should make sure to listen to the audiobook first. And remember that I recommended it to you. Such an entertaining read, I love Rocky shout out. Uh, also, it's just, yeah, it's one of the best, like, science fiction books I've read in a long time. One of my favorite books in general. So, 
go listen to it. After this video, of course, Circe by Madeline Miller, as well as The Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller, both amazing books and amazing audiobooks. Sometimes I like to do other things as I'm listening to audiobooks. These audiobooks demanded my attention. Circe is obviously the retelling of the infamous sorceress from Homer's The Odyssey. Now, Circe is read by Perdita Weeks, and she does such a great job. Like, it, it sounds like spellbinding and enchanting. Just her narration kept me engaged the whole time. As we follow Circe's transformation from a nymph into a powerful sorceress. And her voice really like complements and brings out that lyrical voice of Madeline Miller's prose, as well as like the emotional depth of Circe's journey. Such a beautifully crafted story and also just a really, uh, really interesting way to like experience some ancient Greek mythology. World War Z. This is one that you guys recommended to me a lot on my previous, uh, audiobook video and let me just say listening to world war z versus reading it is pretty much a completely different experience this is definitely one of the best audiobooks i've listened to as ridiculous as it sounds it feels like real people reflecting on a zombie outbreak the narration is just so brilliant i can't recommend it enough and typically i don't even read like zombie books this is like the only zombie book I can think of off the top of my head that I've read, and I highly recommend it. Red Rising by Pierce Brown, narrated by Gerard Reynolds. Uh, I really enjoyed the audiobooks for Red Rising. I think the narrator has a, a an Irish accent, a Scottish accent. I could be wrong, so I better just look it up. Yes, an Irish accent. Listen, this is already like a really fast-paced and action-heavy book, but the narrator does such a great job at capturing like Darrow's anger uh, and the whole, you know, revenge theme of the book. Uh, it's honestly one of the best like author narrator duos that I've listened to. His voice perfectly conveys the harshness of this world and he's got a range like he can do like the heavy battle scenes, the anger, the battle yells, but then also the quieter intimate moments as well. Like I said, it's a book that's already going to keep you on the edge of your seat. And uh, then th combine that with the narrator. Mwah! perfection. And obviously, you guys know I have to include this one. Another perfect author narrator duo is the First Law series by Joe Abercrombie and narrated by Stephen Pacey. This is probably my favorite audiobooks, I would say. I'm always going to love Pacey's narration of First Law, as well as the Age of Madness series. He does such a brilliant job. Now, Joe Abercrombie is the king of Grimdark. Abercrombie writes the most compellingly flawed and complex characters. None of them are really good people, but you kind of love them at the same time. The First Law trilogy is frighteningly addictive. I mean, there's not many fantasy authors that write as good as Joe Abercrombie and write such incredible, like, character studies. And that addictive quality is only enhanced by the narrator, Stephen Pacey. He does an astonishing job. And maybe you think I'm exaggerating. Maybe you disagree with me. And I just say, I say no, I, I'm correct here. They're a match made in heaven. And it's one of the best audiobook experiences on Audible, hands down. After all, you have to be realistic about these things. Stephen Pacey must be able to do like 30 different accents, but then he can also like range the tone and pitch and, and he can do a wide range of characters, okay? I was so impressed with the amount of distinct voices he can do and how he keeps track of them all. I don't know how he does it. And also, years ago, I had the chance to interview Joe Abercrombie and Stephen Pacey, and Stephen Pacey just, like, read the audiobook without messing up. And, like, dude, I can barely unscramble my thoughts without stuttering. Say one thing for Stephen Pacey. Say he's a legend. I can make an entire character study on Sandan Glockta, and I'm going to at some point, but Glockta is like one of the best characters in the fantasy genre, in my opinion. He's been through a lot, okay? He's he's become this twisted torturer, uh, but he's constantly battling with his internal thoughts. He always has this witty, cynical internal monologue going on, and he is one of the best characters uh, to listen to because, uh, 
again, the narrator does such a great job at delivering this character's monologues. Lockta has had like his teeth knocked out and Stephen Pacey decides to give him, you know, kind of like a lisp. He really emphasizes the sound, the, the actual way that Glockta would talk. And if that's not a talented narrator, I don't know what is. He's all like bodies floating by the dock. I can't, I can't do it like Pacey, okay? Don't judge me. Fairy Tale by Stephen King. Shout out to my one patron who sent me like a ton of Stephen King books. Thank you so much. Uh, but I also picked up the audiobook so I can listen to, listen to it as I'm reading it. And I'm in the middle of reading Fairy Tale. It is... It is really good, okay? I really am enjoying the audiobook quite a bit. I forgot who narrated it. I'm sure I can tell this story. I'm also sure no one will believe it. Seth Numrich narrated this one, and Stephen King narrated some parts as well, which I think made it even better. Now, Stephen King isn't the best narrator in my opinion, with some other audiobooks that I checked out, but this one, uh, I don't know, this one felt different. I felt like he did a much better job uh, in this book. Let me say, okay, Stephen King can write a story. We all know that, and, and this... This is a story. This is a really good story. And Seth is, is extremely talented. He does such a great job narrating this book. Uh, you should check it out. And I also listened to The Stand by Stephen King. And it's narrated by uh, uh, Gardner. And he does a really great job just capturing the huge cast of characters. The eerie, desolate world that they inhabit. Grover Gardner. Yeah, that's his name. He has a really, like, steady and clear voice, so it just makes it, you know, really engaging to listen to. Lots of tension in the story, lots of different characters, uh, and this, in my opinion, I, I'm kind of new to reading Stephen King. The Stand feels like an epic, okay? It, it almost feels like an epic fantasy. It is an epic, post-apocalyptic story of good versus evil, and uh, it's one of my favorite books that I've read, and I just read it this year. Between Two Fires by Christopher Buhlman. This was a recent read for me and a lot more people need to read this book. It is a medieval horror historical fiction novel. It's kind of a mix and it was really intense. Like I was, I, I couldn't stop listening to the audiobook. There's so many emotional moments and terrifying moments. It's also just got, even though it is like horror and there's a lot of dread in the story it also has a lot of hope to it as well there's hope for humanity and that's something i really like to see actually it's probably one of my favorite books i read this year so the the audiobook i would highly recommend i don't remember who narrated it let me check and sent him into the hot coals in the belly of the earth to blacken his face with soot and know he was lower than the lord steve west is the narrator and his performance just made it really easy to listen to he's got like a british accent accent and he's really great with all the characters and everything uh, and this is a book that you really need to check out between two fires this book is set in 1348 in france during the black death and we follow a disgraced knight named thomas who ends up finding this young girl who's an orphan of black death her whole village was killed and this girl is kind of strange she can talk to angels and she ends up telling him that there is a larger cataclysm that's going on in the background. The plague is actually Lucifer trying to attack uh, God and trying to start a second war in heaven. And the world of men has fallen in line with that conflict. Now there's, you know, the dead are rising, there's demons and stuff, and this young girl, he needs to trust her and go on this mission. Uh, and hopefully, you know, hopefully she's right. Hopefully it's not just delirium or something. And it is such a fascinating story, and there's a lot of complex characters. Again, some really emotional moments and also some funny moments in there as well. And the narrator does such a brilliant job at just tying it all together. Okay, when I talk about the Wheel of Time, everyone's gonna think of Michael... Michael Scott? No! What's his name? Michael Kramer. Michael Kramer and Kate Redding. I understand. They're, you know, they're legends. They've narrated so many fantasy stories. And honestly, I like their narration. I find that it's a good, it's like a pretty safe option, their their narration. But they aren't exactly my favorite. I will listen to an audiobook uh, that they narrate and I'll be happy. But it's not like my go-to narration. So this might sound sacrilegious, okay? But with The Wheel of Time, I actually prefer the newer audiobooks narrated by Rosamund Pike. Uh, Rosamund Pike? She does an amazing job. Absolutely kills it.
She was born to narrate audiobooks. I would listen to every audiobook if she narrated it. I hope she continues to narrate all the Wheel of Time books. I think she's going to, but I'm not, I'm not quite sure. Listen, again, I don't hate Michael Kramer and Kate Redding. I think they're fantasy sweethearts, okay? Aww. They've narrated so many, so many of, like, the classic fantasy books and the modern classics as well. They've narrated so many of my favorites. I will say, though, that sometimes they're, like, sometimes their like tone or cadence just seems a little bit off for me for like certain scenes or characters. It's like I wouldn't really read it that way if I was reading it in my head. Again, I'm not trashing on them. I know that's like everyone's favorite narrators. I, I understand they're they're good, but they're not as good as Rosamund Pike. Okay, I'm just gonna I'm gonna say that she can deliver emotions so so well. If you've listened to both of them, let me know your thoughts. Let me know if I'm completely wrong. Michael Kramer and Kate Redding are goaded, I know. How dare I say that about them? I hold to it, okay? I 100% am sticking to this opinion. Sometimes I love to listen to a classic nostalgic fantasy, and obviously The Lord of the Rings, we all love it. It's always one that I go back to, especially the audiobook version. Now, I mentioned in my previous audiobook video that I always would listen to the Rob Inglis version, and I just, I didn't listen to the Andy Serkis one. I was wrong, okay? Andy Serkis narrating Lord of the Rings, that is an experience that should not go missed. The way he uses his voice for different characters, the way that he sings the songs, it actually makes the songs more interesting to me, and I don't just like, you know, glance over them. He is a phenomenal talent. Talent. Why did I say that word weird? But there is one better. Let that sink in for a moment. Don't don't get your pitchforks because I, I'm telling you the truth. Phil Dragash is incredible. Now this is a fan-made version of, of the Lord of the Rings. Basically, Phil Dragash did a narration and a soundscape for the Lord of the Rings. And you can find it online completely free because again, it is fan-made. And it is truly such an incredible feat of, of like a passion project. I've never seen a passion project like this that probably took so many hours and he did it all for free. I believe you used to be able to find it on YouTube. I don't know if it's been taken down now. It can be a little bit hard to find, but find it because you won't regret it. There really aren't that many audiobooks that can compare to this. I mean, every voice he does, all the accents and everything are so spot on. The soundscape is rich and immersive and it has like the original score that comes in to build emotion and make it even more immersive. It is truly a beautiful experience. And really, I feel like it should set like a new standard for audiobooks. Oh yeah, and did I mention, it, again, it's available for free, okay? This is just a labor of love by Phil Dragash, uh, and it is truly something that any fan of The Lord of the Rings needs to listen to. Incredible experience, and I'm ashamed that not that many people know about it. I should be recommending I should be recommending it in more videos. The Sandman by Neil Gaiman. This is a really interesting audiobook because the, the source material is a comic book. So that makes you wonder how it's going to translate. Well, it translates really well, actually. Of course, an ensemble cast of A-list actors are going to do a good job. And they did. And seriously, like, the list of actors is almost intimidating in quality. And you get a ton of music and sound effects that kind of helps replace some of the visuals in the in the comic book. I still prefer the comic myself, but this, this isn't flawless, but it is really good. Neil Gaiman himself takes on the role of, like, the narrator, uh, and beloved Scottish actor James McAvoy plays Morpheus, and he adds a lot of, like, human emotion and empathy. And, of course, there's other actors like Kat Dennings, uh, Michael Sheen, Andy Serkis. Now, this one is an Audible exclusive, so you do need, like, an Audible subscription, I think, to listen to it. I would say it's worth it. Again, one of the best audio experiences that I've listened to. Gaiman has also narrated a lot of his other other books. He does a really great job at narrating himself. Um, Neverwhere is a fantastic audiobook. It was actually originally a, a BBC radio drama, and that is so good as well. Once again, James McAvoy takes the role of the protagonist, but we were also gifted with an amazing performance by the late Christopher Lee. Oh, and Benedict Cumberbatch also uh, was one of the voices, I think for the angel. And obviously, since this is a full radio drama, it's got the sound effects and music and all that stuff. I know some 
some people don't like that. They feel like it distracts them uh, from from the performance, from the book, whatever. Uh, and that's fine. So that that's subjective. Personally, I love, I absolutely love when audiobooks have sound effects and music. It just feels so immersive. And Neverwhere is a fantastic book. I love feeling immersed uh, and drawn into the world of London Below. Oh, should I mention like the Neil Gaiman drama? The whole controversy right now? Uh, why do our heroes have to secretly be monsters? It's honestly appalling. Uh, I don't want to get into it in this video. Now, speaking of me enjoying like the sound effects and music and all that stuff, one of my guilty pleasures is listening to uh, Star Wars audiobooks. Now, the Star Wars books range in quality, but I do feel like some people are sleeping on some of these books. There are some really great Star Wars books out there. Bloodline is one of my favorites. Same with the original Thrawn trilogy so good. Even the new Thrawn trilogy is good as well. If you don't know the original Thrawn trilogy, now it's not canon, but to me, that's how the, se the sequel movies should have been the original Thrawn trilogy. It would have been much better. Lost Stars is another great Star Wars book. This one's more for like a young adult audience, but I really enjoyed it. Anyways, I love the sound effects, hearing the lightsaber sounds, the droids, all the background music and everything. That makes the experience so much more enjoyable for me. I always end up reading like a few Star Wars books a year, and I always try to get the audiobooks when I can because they're so immersive. Obviously, The Lies of Locke Lamora by Scott Lynch is like a masterclass high story. It has so much character, even just to the writing. The writing style is beautiful. Scott Lynch is such a talented author. If you haven't read The Lies of Locke Lamora, you need to. And also, if you like audiobooks, I'm gonna recommend the audiobook because uh, Michael Page is the narrator here, and he is also very talented. To me, he he's... I, I could kind of compare him to Stephen Pacey in a way. I do like Stephen Pacey just a little bit more, but Michael Page, it, he does justice to this cast of characters. He can do so many different voices. He really captures the essence of the Gentleman Bastards. The wit and the charm, the sneakiness, he has it all. His ability to switch between different accents and tones for different characters just adds a lot of versatility to the experience. And uh, I, I just loved following the narration uh, following, sorry, what am I trying to say? Following Locke Lamora, the cunning leader of the Gentleman Bastards, and exploring the dark underbelly of Camor uh, through Michael Page's narration. It just feels like his voice is meant to be the one telling the story. Again, perfect author and narrator duo. Also, like the fast-paced action and the clever dialogue and the world-building of The Lies of Locke Lamora just make it perfect uh, for listening. If you are a fan of The Dresden Files by Jim Butcher and you haven't listened to the audiobooks, you really need to give them a chance. To me, the audiobooks for The Dresden Files, I mean, James Marsters is Harry Dresden, to me at least. Uh, to me, I can't picture anybody else for the voice of Dresden. I'm sure you probably probably know, but it follows Chicago's private investigator and wizard Harry Dresden as he's navigating the supernatural underbelly of Chicago. There's vampires, werewolves, fairies, all types of different creatures. These books are so much fun, and it's a series that just gets better the further along you read into it. Uh, I'm still around, like, book eight, I think. Now, there is one Dresden Files audiobook where James Marsters couldn't narrate it because other obligations, and they got a fill to narrate it. Fans were livid. They were so upset. And eventually that book got re-recorded by Marsters because, because obviously he is the voice of Dresden. I have been obsessed with listening to Dungeon Crawler Carl by Matt Dineman. I was genuinely surprised when I found out that only one narrator did all the voices. I thought there was multiple narrators here. We'll have to go out there. We should do it now before the hunters can get here. New achievement! Insurgent. You left an explosive device along a well-traveled path, and it detonated and killed an intended target. Uh, Jeff Hayes does an incredible narration for this series. One of the best I've ever listened to. They are all shapes and sizes, and they're always trying to get into town to eat us. 
Otherwise, Katya could grow a hundred arms on her back and carry around 500 plus one rings of- It's ugly. And the gym is turquoise. Turquoise! Do I look like an elderly woman with smoke-stained teeth sitting in a bingo hall? It, this is objectively better in audio form, in my opinion. Honestly, this is up there with the First Law Trilogy. This is one of my favorite audiobook series of all time. And if you're going to read one lit RPG, then this is the one to read. Amazing characters, good progression, and it's one of the funniest book series I've listened to. It has a lot of emotional moments as well, and the layered levels of the dungeon means that there's always new environments to keep it fresh. You need to listen to Dungeon Crawler Carl. Now, the Dune audiobook that has a full cast and everything, we need to talk about that. It... It was very mixed for me. Simon Vance is a great narrator, but some of the narration here is so inconsistent. At times, Vance will be narrating the dialogue, and then other times, it's the full cast. So I don't really know what happened there. Sometimes it would swap styles midway through the chapter. This made it so confusing. Usually, I love a full cast audiobook, and I did enjoy this one, but it didn't quite hit the mark. I feel like, I feel like they could have done a lot better. Speaking of which, Harry Potter is getting new audiobooks in late 2025, and they're going to be full cast productions and everything, so I'm hoping those will be good. I mean, Harry Potter is still a big comfort read for me. I love the audiobooks as well, and there's two different versions of Harry Potter, one narrated by Jim Dale and the other by Stephen Fry. Now, there's a huge debate on which is better. Personally, I think it just depends on which you listen to first. I love the Jim Dale versions, but Fry's are great as well. Let me know if you prefer Jim Dale or Stephen Fry in the comments. The Old Kingdom series by Garth Nix. This is a favorite young adult series of mine. It follows Sabriel, and Sabriel's father, the Abhorzen, goes missing. Now, the role of the Abhorzen is to use powerful magical bells to bind, banish, and put the dead back to sleep. With the help of Mogget, a mysterious and potentially dangerous spirit trapped in the form of a cat, and Touchstone, a young charter mage, Sabriel ventures deep into the Old Kingdom in search of her father. Now, this is such an underrated series, and Tim Curry uh, narrating these, he does an amazing job. Again, one of my favorite series to listen to. And specifically, he does an amazing voice for Mogget. This is a high recommendation from me. The Ryeria Revelations by Michael J. Sullivan. This entire series is such a great fantasy series, and it's voiced by Tim Reynolds, which if you don't know, he's an incredible narrator. Now, Sullivan is unmatched in his ability to weave in humor into what is already just a wonderful, tight plot, and Hadrian and Royce are possibly two of my favorite fictional characters of all time. They're such a great combo. Now, there is also a graphic audio dramatized version, which I love as well. Some people find graphic audio to be a little bit too distracting with all the music and sound effects, and I agree, at times the music is a bit overpowering, but I do love how immersive it is and how it feels like a movie in your mind. Now, I couldn't talk about best audiobooks without talking about Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy by Douglas Adams. Now, if it is your first time experiencing these books, then I'm going to recommend you listen to book one narrated by Stephen Fry. He does a wonderful job. Then he ends up handing the narration off with the other books to Martin Freeman, the actor who played Arthur in the famous film adaptation, and Freeman does a mind-blowing job. Honestly, incredible audiobooks. But if you've already read these books before, then I'm gonna recommend you go and listen to the BBC radio versions. It has a full cast of characters, sound effects and everything, uh, and it's one of the best like audio experiences you can find. The reason I recommend the ordinary audiobooks first is because the radio play does have some slight differences from the books. There's some extra bits added in, and there's a few things taken out, so the story structure is just a little bit different. It's nothing too major, but I would recommend listening to the original story first. And those are some of the best audiobooks of all time, at least according to me. Let me know all of your recommendations down in the comments. And a huge thank you to all of my patrons who make these videos possible. 